Okay, we're going to get started. I want to welcome everybody to today's presentation. Uh, today's presentation is intentionally optimistic with Parkinson's disease. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, um, the APDA is a grassroots organization. We try our best to provide those living with Parkinson's disease um, everything that we possibly can from a support standpoint to help them live you know, the best life that they can. And one of the things that we've been doing in the course of the pandemic in, in the last year and a half has been these virtual education sessions. Each month we presented on various things such as blood pressure, um, DBS, driving with PD, and some other scientific topics. We thought today uh, we would switch it up a little bit and present you know, the view from those living with PD and what they've experienced. And so our topic for today is intentionally optimistic with Parkinson's disease. In no way do we want people to misinterpret this, to think that you know, what we wanna do is change thinking and not really worry about research and support and things of that nature. Um, what we have heard from those living with PD is they really want to hear from other individuals that are living with PD so that they can hopefully find some strategies that might help them leave, live life to the fullest. And so what we've done is we've uh, put together three panelists that will talk a little bit about what their experience has been with PD. Uh, we prepared some questions uh, for each of them after they give a little overview of uh, their experience with PD. And at the very end, if there are any questions from the audience, feel free to put those in either uh, the Q&A box or the chat box, and hopefully we'll be able to get um, to those questions at the very end. Thank you. Next slide, please. So uh, to give you an overview, um, you know, the APDA of Mass has been in operation for decades and offers programs and services to the Parkinson community in Massachusetts and surrounding states. We've received a large response for this presentation from across the entire country. There has been a tremendous progress in understanding and treating Parkinson's disease. PD is highly individualized from person to person. Not all that is discussed today is relevant to everyone. Healthcare team must be familiar with signs and symptoms, treatment strategies, and how PD impacts the individual patient. Treating PD well requires a team approach. Today, we are providing information that is not intended as medical advice. So without further ado, what I'd like to do is introduce Bill Rasmussen. Bill is the founder of ESPN. Bill's career in media um, began in Western Massachusetts. Bill is a United States Air Force veteran. Bill received his bachelor's degree in economics from DePaul University and his MBA from Rutgers University. He lives in Seattle and in Tampa or in Florida, sorry, uh, with his family. And so without further ado, what I'd like to do is introduce Bill. Thanks, Bill. Nice to see you again. You're always got your hair part of the same way I do, so I love to talk to you. As you as you might guess from the title of this particular uh, presentation today about being intentionally optimistic, I'm one of those people who is very optimistic. Seems to me I've been doing that for a long time, and well, I guess I have. Uh, a month from tomorrow is my 89th birthday, so I've made that intentional optimism. Uh, work in a number of areas. Certainly, uh, Bill mentioned ESPN. Uh, I can't tell you how many people told us that wouldn't work because there weren't enough sports to cover in 24 hours a day, but we were optimistic about what might happen with that company. That's the most successful venture that I've had along the way. What I didn't know though, until, well, it was just before ESPN, I discovered that my mother was suffering from Parkinson's. And that was the first time I even heard the word, almost literally. Um, and uh, eventually, she I think she was 77 at the time. And so I was vaguely familiar with Parkinson's. 
one day when I was seeing my primary care uh, uh, provider, he said, I asked him about a little tremor in my finger. I didn't know if it was from, I didn't know what it might be from. Maybe it was from years of being hit in the hand with baseball or bat or whatever. And he said he just thought it was a little tremor and not to worry about it. Well, I, that was probably in 2012 or 13. By 2014, it had progressed to a rather shaky left hand. And so I went and saw a neurologist and uh, he diagnosed me with you know, testing and so on. Diagnosed me with uh, Parkinson's in 2014. But even the announcement of him telling us that I had Parkinson's had a bright note and an optimistic note in it. My daughter is a oncology radiation nurse in Seattle and has been for over 30 years. She went with me to that appointment. And when the doctor said, I have some bad news for you, the immediate thought in her mind was something, brain, brain cancer or something of the sort. And he said, you have Parkinson's. My daughter said, oh, good meaning, oh good, it's not something worse than Parkinson's. So from that point on, we started to find out more and more about Parkinson's, uh, continued, finally started taking medication for it. But uh, the thing that I have found is staying active, staying physically active, and more importantly, active with the brain. We all hear about it, exercising, and we have lots of movement disorder folks and people recommending different ways and uh, Roxane uh, Boxing has been mentioned earlier today. I think that keeping active physically and mentally is the most important thing to do. And one last item, Bill, on the keeping active mentally and exercising your brain, the neurologist said, suggested as one, what one crutch, if you will, to, to keep the brain active write a page about anything, take an eight and a half, 11 piece of paper, write something that fills that page about any topic you want every day when you get up. Um, so I did that, I started that down that path and instead it turned into a book. And so when the book's available, Bill, I'll let you know and we'll go from there. But I am one of the absolutely positively, intentionally optimistic people you will meet because I think in this country, in this lifetime, we can do just about anything we want if we collectively put our minds to it. And I might not beat Parkinson's, but I'm determined to be around for ESPN's 50th anniversary, which is 1997. So that when you're 89, that's just around the corner. Thanks, Bill. Thank you very much, Bill. I'd like to in introduce our next presenter. Melissa lives in central Massachusetts and was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in her late thirties. And that was exactly what she needed a light of fire to chase her dreams. She turned to music and she shocked everyone around her by taking charge of her illness and becoming an inspiration to everyone that crossed her path, particularly with the Parkinson chorus around the country that is managed by APDA. She works at a local university and loves music and horses. And so I'd like to introduce you to Melissa. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, like Bill, I've, um, I've ha I had a similar experience where I was quite relieved to find out that I had Parkinson's because the, the testing that I had gone through was, was scary. And um, I, I felt that Parkinson's was something I could manage. Um, and I've been an athlete my whole life. So it was, it was a really, it was hard to, kind of focus on the things that were most important to keep my mobility where it was at. And, and I took it very seriously. And um, I had a therapist at the time who, who I was seeing with my, with my kids. And she felt that um, I talked about a lot about music because I was very musical my whole life. My whole family is. And, um, but I never had time for it. I was always busy working, taking care of my kids, bringing them to hockey, doing all the mother things that I had to all the obligations that I had. And um she said, I think you should make more music. And I thought, yeah, I, I, I could, but like, I don't know which direction I'm going to go with that. I, I, like I had never written music before or anything like that. So 
out of the blue, one of my friends, one of my good friends actually cut out a newspaper clipping about this Parkinson's chorus in Shrewsbury. And um, I was so excited about it. And inst- I was so excited about it instantly. So I went and um, they were so excited. They, 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 just, they not only welcomed me, they just, they, they were just like, it was like open arms. And I was early onset, whereas this was, you know, uh, they were much older than me, all of them, but they were so welcoming made me feel like a family. They were just amazing. And um, I hit it off with, with one of the participants and we kind of started working together on the side and, and she'd been a singer her whole life. So she was, she was like teaching me how to, how to do things. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't know how to do. I, I played the piano my whole life, but I hadn't really, I have, wasn't really a singer. So, and I'm still not really a singer, but I make the best of it. But um, I started writing about Parkinson's and um, it became, a, it became a big outlet for me. And um I, it, it just, I, I've written several songs about, about Parkinson's and about my struggle with Parkinson's and everyone around me. I just, I just started to inspire people. I, I, um, it was, it was inspiring me at the same time because all the people that I was meeting, I was on this path that I cannot believe there's a motorcycle behind me right now. <laughs> uh, I was on this path that literally changed my life. Like everybody that I met from there on was like, it was like they were put there for a purpose. And I met some, I met someone who I started writing with and I, we went to a recording studio. We started producing music and, um, and the Parkinson's chorus, like is what started it all. And, and Wendy and all of them are so amazing. And I think that sometimes I, we have to like educate our families on, on what we need. And, um, what I needed was just an outlet and I know everybody's different, but I think if you find, if you, if you look for things that inspire you and, and a support system within them and the APDA has been just amazing that the programs that they put together, especially this one has really changed my life. Um, I can't say enough about it. And um, I just, I think I, I've, I've handled my illness the way I have because of all of that. It's not, it's not just, who I am it's it's the people around me as well so um I don't want to take too much of your time but um I'm going to to read you just a little a little um clip from one of my songs um that that kind of is on this topic and it's it goes I'm searching for everything I'm missing I only have one life one dream one chance to prove everything so what are you waiting for don't wait for something more it's up to you to decide if it's a blessing in disguise. And that's how I view Parkinson's. If, if I hadn't, if I hadn't gotten diagnosed with Parkinson's, I wouldn't have met all these amazing people and done all these amazing things. I, I, I absolutely believe that 100%. And so I call it a blessing in disguise because, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy disease to live with, but at the same time, it absolutely changed my life. So um, that's how I stay positive. And uh, that's it. I'm going to turn it back over to Bill. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much, Melissa. That's a fantastic story. And I'm glad that you were able to share that with everybody on today. Thank you so much. And so next, I'd like to introduce Jay Zavala. Uh, Jay was born in Denver, Colorado, <clears throat> and currently lives in uh, on Cape Cod. After an honorable stint in the military, he settled in New Orleans, Louisiana, where he raised a family. Jay is our honoree for the third annual APDA PSN, which is Parkinson Support Network, Cape Cod Optimism Walk. He is prominent in the community on Cape Cod. He's most well known for his tireless commitment to the Parkinson Support Network and APDA and his Parkinson friends across Cape Cod and beyond. Jay has been an inspiration to everybody that he has interacted with. And so I'd like to introduce Jay Zavala who is a retired um, person on Cape Cod. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Appreciate the introduction with the emphasis on being a retiree. What a great spot to be in. Hi, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, when Bill first mentioned the intentional optimism, uh, I embrace that, that notion because like Bill and Melissa, uh, it takes good intentions to make things happen. And optimism is something that I've always I- embraced. It's harder to be negative and to, and to be despondent. It seems to be a little bit easier or a whole lot easier to be optimistic about 
where we are in, in life. Uh, <clears throat> I'm fortunate uh, that in some five years ago at the age of 72, uh, I was initially diagnosed with ALS. And fortunately that diagnosis was changed with a second uh, uh, opinion to uh, Parkinson's. So in anticipation of that second opinion, I recall promising God a whole basket full of, of devotion and uh, all the good things that I would do if it was reversed. So I've got my work cut out for me and uh, I'm trying to live that, that lifestyle. Uh, I find that APDA with all of its programs and activities really makes it easier to deal with this uh, disease. Uh, I've heard people say they suffer from Parkinson's disease. I like to just simply say that I'm fighting Parkinson's disease. Uh, I, don't, I don't suffer from it. I don't have any ailments to speak of. Uh, it began with tongue tremors and that's what made it difficult to initially diagnose. Uh, everybody starts off a little bit different. We all have our own uh, road to travel and uh, issues to deal with. But in general, I found that uh, hanging out with my good friends with, uh, through APDA, I'm able to learn more about the disease. And I think that's fundamental. To, uh, if you understand what you've got, the, you, you know what you have to do to deal with it. Uh, the second part that I'm really drawn to is that APDA focuses a lot of its attention on caregivers, partners, those who help us live a full and rich life. So uh, I know that I focus on that component of it because uh, my wife is my partner as well as my caregiver. And I want this journey that I'm on to be as stressless as possible on her uh, as well as myself. Uh, as I've told Bill and as Melissa and, and Bill have come to learn, I like to believe that I walk on the sunny side of the street anyway, but I know that optimism is not something that you're just born with. It's something you have to embrace and work at it. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to share some of our strategies with you on how we've overcome some of the challenges and the challenges ahead that we have to prepare for through planning and through setting goals and to waking up in the morning and making a, a definitive decision on how you wish to spend your day. So thank you all for coming. And Bill, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Jay, very much. Great message. And thank you so much for everything that you do for the PD community and APDA. And so uh, we've got a few questions that we have uh, prepared. If you have any questions that you'd like to um, have asked at the very end, just put those in either the Q&A box or the chat box, and we'll try and get to those at the very end. And so my first question is for Bill. And that question is understanding that each person that lives with PD diagnosis has a different experience with symptoms. Can I ask you to share how you live well with one or th two thoughts on how you approach living well with PD? I think, the, I think the most important part to me, Bill, uh, is when I wake up in the morning, just as Jay was mentioning, you start the day, you better be ready to start the day. My approach every single morning, and I think everybody, whether you have Parkinson's or not, should wake up with a positive thought. If you have a positive, the first moments of being of wakefulness, if you have that positive thought, that's going to carry you through the day and everything that goes with it. Um, you come to lunchtime and you're kind of tired or something and you feel, what am I doing if you start off in a negative way? I don't, I, don't like, I don't like to approach it that way. So I make a conscious effort every time I wake up, open my eyes, have a positive thought. It can be about anything, weather even, rain, whatever it might be, snowstorms, fire, wildfires in Oregon doesn't make any difference or some tiny thing. The second thing I do is instantly begin a stretching routine before the day begins. 
I do that several times in the course of a day. And I think that's very important. And the third thing that I do each morning without fail is make the bed. Now that sounds odd. Somebody will say, why is an old guy like me getting up and making the bed? It's, a job, it's an accomplishment. It's a job well done. It's finished its need and then puts you, it takes that original positive thought, expands it into, now I've done the first job of the day and completed it. Where do we go from here? I think the approach to Parkinson's from the positive point of view, from the intentionally optimistic point of view, is the best thing that I can do for me each day. Might not work for everybody, but I would urge you to at least try if some of these things, stretching, making a bed, waking up with positive thoughts, doesn't hurt to smile when you talk to people either. Uh, that's just the way I've been my entire life. I know of a couple of occasions when I've been checking out at a supermarket or going someplace where somebody's normal greeting is, good morning, how are you today? And if you say, if I felt any better, the world couldn't stand me. They stop, they look up and they smile. When they smile, I smile. So a positive, absolutely uh, intentionally optimistic approach to life, at least in my case, Bill, is is working and I would encourage everyone to at least try it. Good. Thank you, Bill. Same question for Melissa. Um, you know, everybody has a different uh, experience with symptoms. Can you share one or two thoughts on how you approach living with PD? Um, I think I think staying active is is absolutely most important. If you talk to any neurologist, um, that's the first thing they'll tell you is to, you know, start fighting because um, even though we don't have a cure, it's it's very important to keep your mobility. Um, and you can slow, you can even slow the progression in some cases, I think, um, by fighting. Um, so I think that's definitely a number one. But I think um, what Bill said about um, educating family, like I know with my family, they they uh, they reacted very differently than I thought they were going to when I when I started telling them about my diagnosis because I was relieved and, and ready to move forward and it lit a fire like I wanted to just get up and you know do something about it and um, I think all, like all the symptoms are different for everybody and, and everybody's scenario is, is totally different so I think it's important to educate your family and and help them understand what your situation is because if you google something or hear somebody else's story that's not necessarily how your story is going to go um and because parkinson's is very different in, in every patient so you kind of have to find your own your own way a little bit and and take the support that's offered as well um because it's all learning curve for everybody but i think you should take your family along for the ride because the more that they understand, the more they're going to be able to help you. And I think that makes your quality of life better by having that support there. Um, and, you know, if there's no cure and while we're waiting for a cure, you may as well have the best quality of life that you possibly can. And I think that that's primarily what that helps is, um, you know, having your family right behind you and, and understanding all the support systems that are available for people that don't have a, you know, a close family that, that can help them out. So, that's where I think these APDA programs really come in handy because there's other people, there's a whole family of people that you can dial into that you don't even know are there. You feel so alone when you have Parkinson's. You don't want to go out. Like I worry when I go in the grocery store, my foot's going to lock up and I'm going to cause a scene. I worry about that all the time. But, you know, if you're within a community of people that understand what you're going through, it just helps so much. And you're tempted to withdraw from everything, but it, it's the opposite that you really need to to, to get that quality of life that you deserve. And I just think having Parkinson's in general changes your perspective on life as a whole. And uh, that's what it did for me, especially it made me focus on the things that are most important to me. And, um, and I think I'm living a better life than I was when I didn't have Parkinson's. So, um, so I think those are the, the, those are the two things that I would say weigh the most heavily. Thank you, Melissa. So same question for Jay. So, can you share how you live well with one or two thoughts on how you approach living well with PD? Sure. 
and and I want to embrace what Melissa just said. Uh, the edu the self education is paramount, uh, and it and it feeds right into the intentionality of being optimistic. Uh, you know, APDA has wonderful educational programs, webinars. Uh, back before the pandemic, there were events going on across the Cape that were sponsored by APDA that were educational in nature. Uh, that's where I began. Once I was diagnosed with PD, all I knew is that there was shaking, a whole lot of shaking going on as uh, uh, as the song goes, the old song goes. Uh, so I attended a, uh, an educational seminar at the YMCA here in Hyannis that was sponsored by APDA. And that was my introduction into the APDA community. And I met a whole bunch of folks. And in fact, um, I was, I'd previously been the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Falmouth. So I knew a lot of folks across the Cape and I was invited onto the board of the Parkinson Support Network. And I felt what better way to deal with this than from the inside where I would have an opportunity to meet a lot of people and get, gain the education I needed so that I could make a rational acceptance of what I suffer with. What, I'm, what my challenges are uh, and be able to plan and execute my day, day by day. Uh, I've noticed over the, the past five years that my tremors have increased a little bit. I've noticed that my uh, gait has been slightly affected. Uh, surely I've noticed that my voice has changed somewhat, but in the course of that, I also strongly believe that I am slowing down the progression of Parkinson's by being well-educated about the disease and by doing things like rock steady boxing, where it gives me an opportunity to, to play. We do things at rock steady boxing that kids do every, every day, jump and skip and hop and have a great time and burn a lot of energy and uh, punch the bags. Nobody punches you back. Uh, that's, a, that's a great exercise. But hand in hand with that, uh, my formula is the educational component comes first. That makes the rational acceptance of what I have and how to deal with it. And it sets the stage for every day making a plan and setting goals for, for that day. So I will do my exercises for the Lee Silverman's voice, uh, voice exercises, uh, the physical exercises, of course. I take care of my nutritional issues. Uh, my wife's at work, I make my own meals at noon, make certain that I'm not eating anything that, that works against the medication, such as a grapefruit. Uh, uh, you know, this is one of those diseases that you just have to grab it by the throat and say, I'll deal with you on my terms rather than. So that's how I approach it every day. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I start my day in prayer. I'm grateful for being able to open my eyes and, uh, and have the day ahead of me. So it's, uh, it's a positive approach to managing my daily life. And I might mention, that also relieves my wife that because she knows that I'm proactive in the process. I almost feel like I'm talking to the choir here. Uh, I would think that most people who are optimistic have tuned in because of it. it's a shared experience. Uh, if there are any folks in the 50 or so folks that have signed on who are not naturally optimistic, the, hopefully we'll give you the tools, some tools that you can use to gain that perspective. Back to you, Bill. Thank you, Jay, Melissa, and Bill. <clears throat> Next question I have is in my work with the PD community, many people have shared that they have benefited with a support system. Can you share what your support system is, Bill? 
Sure. The, uh, when I was first diagnosed, <clears throat> I was still very actively working and uh, traveling around the country. And that, that stayed that way for, well, I guess, three or four years. And then when I would, when things were quiet on the speaking and traveling front, uh, I was contacted by one of your good friends, Bill, uh, Gene Allen, back the, in the uh, Northwest region of APDA. And uh, I found out about something called the press group. And the press group led me to uh, meet several people who were suffering from Parkinson's and their individual support partner, whoever it might be. Uh, in some cases, it was a, a relative. In some cases, it was a, a nurse. Various, various things. But the intriguing thing about that whole group was we met, uh, I think, well, five or six or eight times, seven or eight times, and got to know some people and um, became friends, became custom of calling each other, how are you doing today? How's Dennis doing? How's Bill doing? Uh, those kinds of things grew into getting together outside of this press group. And we've been to baseball games and parades and all kinds of different things. And everyone has been very, very encouraging. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Bill, you know about the auctions everyone does. And uh, one of the auctions, uh, a local uh, sports person, Dave Grosby, who you might know, in Seattle and I were auctioned off. I mean, we weren't being, we weren't going to be drawn and quartered like a, like a calf or anything. But we were going to entertain a group at the uh, at a Mariners game. Then the pandemic came along, and everybody that had been involved in going to this Mariners game kept in touch for the better part of 15 months until the crowds were, until people were admitted to the ballpark again. And the same group, we talked to each other through that entire time. And going to a Mariners game became a focal point. And when the day finally happened, it was just spectacular. All that while, just the anticipation of seeing those people, talking to them on the phone in the interim, meeting other folks while I'm out walking in the neighborhood, those kind of almost not strangers anymore, but you meet them for the first time and the common thread putting us all together and keeping us at an elevated level of uh, enthusiasm and optimism for every day. That group has stayed together and that, that was just, to me, that was an amazing uh, experience. And of course, that led me to meeting all of the people at the uh, Seattle Northwest headquarters of uh, the APDA and led to meeting with you, uh, to meeting you, Bill. And uh, I, I just think reaching out, and that's what I think if a person doesn't admit to themselves that they might have Parkinson's, I personally think it's a mistake. And I encourage somebody like that to go to a uh, neurologist and, and, and discover it. It's not a death sentence. We're going. We're doing things, and if we can help each other, and by asking a person, do you, do you think you might have Parkinson's? What's, what? I don't think I'm insulting them. I think I'm helping. There are a lot of people that I see that simply will not go to a doctor. They're convinced it's something else, and I think they're missing out on something because we all have personal and, of course, the national APDA support groups working on our behalf. Can't say enough about all of the people who come up to me and ask me every day if I'm out walking, how's everything today? How's your, how's your leg? How's your, you know, whatever, your tremor. Or just being friendly, saying hello and we're part of the community. I think that's a very positive thing to do and can't thank the support groups enough. Jen and everyone on our, in the Northwest and Bill course in your group in the uh, Massachusetts area. Just talking to you, Bill, is, even when it's a phone call, it's just you and me. It's, uh, that's encouraging and supportive and something to look forward to every day. Thank you, Bill. I'm going to go to Jay next. 
Um, and thank you so much so that everybody knows we've got support groups right now all over the country and many of those are meeting virtually and transitioning to live. So if you need information about support groups, go to your APDA chapter website, find out information or reach out to your uh, chapter and they'll be able to provide you with the information on that. Next for Jay. Jay, can you talk a little bit about your support group and how you benefited from that? Sure, Bill. Well, in, in my instance, um, the support group has, has expanded over time. When, when I was first diagnosed uh, back five years ago, <clears throat> my year had started off with the with the passing of my oldest son, followed by a heart attack, and then ending with the diagnosis of Parkinson's. And um, my wife and partner, care partner, was concerned that I had a massive health issue experience. And so, I wanted to relieve her of the burden that I was that I was going to fall apart or that I was uh, going to become an invalid or something worse. So I uh, just basically rolled up my sleeves and said, "Hey, I'm going to manage this. I can do this. I can take care of take care of my health. I can um, I can I can take care of myself. But of course, we can't. We need help." We need the support of our of our care partners to uh, to navigate some of the travails. I had to learn get the education I needed to understand what the pills were that I was going the medication was that I was going to be taking and how to take it properly and how to manage my way through that to understand the progression of Parkinson, the education that goes along with that, and that's where, where again where I have to give a nod to APDA because they set the stage for expanding your, your knowledge, expanding your circle of, of uh, acquaintances, expanding your circle of caregivers. So now I've got a great neurologist that, that uh, takes care of me. I've got a great nurse that knows all about me. I've got a great caregiver that works with me. And the first thing I can do for them is to let them know and every time that I interact with them that I'm taking care of business. They're part of my team. And as such, I'm gonna do the things that are essential to make sure that I give myself the best opportunity to succeed and live a life, a full and rich life. So, um, that's, that's the fundamental approach that I take, giving my caregivers the confidence to know that I take this seriously, although I can laugh at myself. But uh, yeah, that's my approach. Thank you, Jay. And so next question is for Bill. Thank you so much, Jay, for that. You're welcome. Bill, if you were to talk to somebody who was recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, what would be the top few things that you would tell them based on your experience? So I've heard from actual new, newly diagnosed people who seem to want to say, you know what? I think the doctor just told me I only have a short time to live. And this and that. I, I may have said this to you before, Bill. I uh, spoke to a, a young, he was probably 52 or three gentleman. He said, uh, he asked me if I was taking any medication. I said, yes, I was. He asked me what it was, and I told him. He said, my doctor told me that when I start taking those pills, that particular one, uh, I'll be dead in seven years. Well, I can't imagine a doctor saying that. But what I would say to everyone is, Grab, just as Jay described, grab a hold of all of this uh, information that's available. Uh, take yourself to the positive side of the street, the sunny side of the street, as he used to say in the song. Uh, I just 
I guess I guess my talking to people, I'm, uh, I I can't understand what Jay talks about grabbing it by the throat. That was a very good phrase. I think that's way of doing. It's hard for me to understand that everybody. Why why doesn't everybody do that? We should all grab a hold of it. Uh, and I'm just. I come back to just being positive and, and optimistic about everything that we can do. Uh, I don't know that there'll be a cure for this while I'm still alive. Uh, it's been, as we said earlier, about a half century since they made great strides, any strides in medication. But uh, working with working with the APDA and also, Bill, I think I've mentioned this to you before, uh, I'm a PD ambassador for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And they have done some great work in research and trying to go forward. And when people want to help, there are, there are lots of people who will help in the overall education, the overall support of individuals with Parkinson's. Uh, in my case, I know ESPN uh, has not only helped with cash, but helped with other programs and supported me to the, the point where we have now added to uh, the website that I have on, uh, on online, the ESPNfounder.com. ESPN has contributed all of the services to putting that together. And we now have added a tab for Parkinson's information so we can take it some advantage of the, the four letters that gain some knowledge and, uh, and gain some uh, acceptance and some visibility, I guess we should say. Uh, tell the Parkinson's story. It is such a, with the people like Bill and, and Gene and everyone across the country, Dr. Gilbert, um, we are all working for the right cause. We can all get healthy, as healthy as a person can be and live a, a, a good life. As, as long as we stay optimistic, and if we have no other breakdowns of other diseases or parts of the body, I, I think we can, we can do some very positive things. So I'm encouraged by the uh, support, and I encourage people to look for the support if they're when they're diagnosed, and to participate actively in spreading the word, telling the story. Uh, it's not only here in Florida or in Boston or in Seattle or in St. Louis or Iowa or anywhere. It's across the country. And we, we'd have a pretty formidable army of optimists if we can get people to commit to being actively positive about the support that we, that we can offer others and that we receive from others. Thank you so much. And so we've uh, just got a little bit of time left, <clears throat> but I wanted to go back, you know, with that same question to Jay. Jay, you know, briefly, if you could describe, um, you know, what you would say to a person who is newly diagnosed, what would the top few things, you know, uh, that you would share be? Well, Bill, I've already done this because it's happened. Uh, my opening remarks would be Parkinson's is not a death sentence. It's a living roadmap. So with that said, uh, educate yourself, build a strong team around, get to know your medications and how to manage them. You know, when I first started taking medications, I would try to work the medications around my meals and my activities of the day. It took me a little while, but I learned to get it right for me. And that is to build my day around my medications so that I'm always on target. I always take my medications at the appropriate time. I don't have to be reminded uh, in that regard. And the rest of my day falls into place appropriately and the medications always work and everything uh, is good. So that was, that was my, my, my opening remark with anybody that 
uh, it's not a death sentence. This is just a, a, a little bump along road, life's highway. And uh, if you can manage it, you're going to do yourself a world of good. And, and, and that's, that's one of the things I got to thank you and, and the program for is that I'm given an opportunity such as this to share my perspective with over 40 people and uh, hopefully uh, encourage others to uh, take a bite out of my approach. And it, it works for me and hopefully it would work for others as, as well. Uh, Parkinson's, and there's great research being done. There's hope. I, I like the slogan, the very motto of APDA is uh, optimism and um, hope. Uh, I like that and I, and I embrace it. So that's where I am uh, on this journey and I invite you to join me. Thank you, Jay and Bill and Melissa. We're gonna wrap up. I just have a few slides to cover. Thank you very much for presenting and going through those questions. Very much appreciated. Um, so just a few things. Want to make sure that everybody knows here up in the Northeast, we have a few walks uh, planned. One Saturday, September 18th, and that's going to be at Goddard State Park in East Greenwich, Rhode Island. The second is Sunday, September 19th, and that's going to be at Falmouth High School on Cape Cod. Um, Mr. Jay Zavala is going to be the honoree of that event. And uh, we actually have a lot of fun planned at both. So big sense of community. We hope to see you there. Uh, if you're interested, you can reach out to the chapter. Uh, you can actually walk from all over the country. We also have the opportunity for you to donate if you'd like to each of those uh, walks. And so uh, just reach out out to us if you have any questions or if you want to move forward with that. Next Bill, slide, please. Yeah. Bill, I'd like to mention, you may not have noticed it, but you've got a couple of questions in your box. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Thank you. So additionally, the, in the, information the information referral center is here um, in Boston, 617-638-8466. We have information referral centers all over the country where you can get uh, referrals, resources, education and support, support groups, symposium, educational events. Additionally, uh, health and wellness programs. Just go to our website for that information. Good. Next slide, please. Good. And this talks just a little bit about some of our programs that we have available. Um, we, uh, you can search for us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and on our APDAMA.org website. Good. Next slide, please. And we want to thank Bill Rasmussen, Jay Zavala, and Melissa Stadi for presenting today. Many of those questions that we've had in the Q&A box, we've answered directly and we'll follow up with you. Uh, thank you for all your comments and all your questions. Thanks so much to all the presenters today. And uh, we're gonna be sending out the recording to everybody that has registered for this event. And so we very much appreciate everybody attending and all of your uh, participation.